Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clinton Navigator Bowman with The Outer Haven Productions, www.theouterhaven.net. I'm here with the man behind the game, Techno Babylon, at Wadget Eye Games, Dave Gilbert. Dave, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I'm watching the snow, which is pretty awesome. It is a very pretty sight. At least it's not snowing heavy. No. So that's actually good for us who are here in Astoria right now <laughs> at Indiecade East 2015. I had to add wow, that in. Wow, add that little I, bit in. that was amazing. Yeah, I had <laughs> to add amazing. that bit in there. Just to make sure everybody knows where we're at. Mm. I mean, even though they, even though you know, it will be in the Facebook, I mean, the Facebook, YouTube description. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're here to talk a little bit about Techno Babylon. Talk a little bit about Wadget Eye Games. Mm -hmm. First things first, Wadget Eye Games. History behind it, games created. Okay, well, uh, started in 2006. It was just basically me and a few uh, freelance artists and composers and things. Um, making point and click adventure, that making point and click adventure games. Uh, started with the Shiva and the Blackwell series, kind of very urban noir stories. Uh, I was later joined by my wife Janet. When uh, she's a programmer, nice. we got married in 2009, so she uh, help, um, works with me uh, programming the games. And then we just sort of grew from there. We've got a full-time artist now and one full-time designer. So I guess we're a team of four full-time people and some other freelancers. So we've done about 13 games since 2006. We're mostly known for a game called Gemini Roo. That was kind of our biggest game that put us on the map. We've done, of course, the Black Wolf series, Resonance, Primordia. We just did a game called Golden Wake, which was released last October. And our next game is Techno Babylon. All right, so it's a family affair, Wadget Eye Games. Ish, well, yeah. now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's that's actually pretty good. A lot we don't really see a lot of family affair in um, gaming. Mm -hmm. Now, going on to Techno Babylon, it's a future premise. Yes. So, would you like to expound more on that premise of what the, what the game is, what the story is behind it, and why gamers such as our audience and other audiences that may watch should be interested in the game? Well, it's uh, I guess cyberpunk or cyber noir which is um, you know, very urban, everything is run by big corporations. Uh, it stars three characters and three separate stories. Um, the main character, one of the main characters is a kind of detective named Charlie Regis who's being blackmailed with his, um, his unborn children. And he's, uh, in the course of that, he's framed for a murderer and he goes on the run to try to free himself. Uh, the other character is a woman named Latha who's kind of addicted to the future equivalent of the internet, which is called the trance. It's a form of virtual reality, which uh, kind of provides uh, the game's coolest visuals, the, the virtual reality stuff. Nice. But she's targeted for assassination, doesn't know why, goes off to try to figure out what's going on and why people are trying to kill her. And the third character is um, another cop who is the first character's partner who is charged with, who's tasked with tracking him down. So all three stories kind of converge and in all sorts of interesting ways. It's an interesting world. It's all very kind of really steeped in a lot of uh, detail. I didn't write this one myself. Okay. Uh, this is a game we're publishing. But I was very impressed when, I, when he pitched it to me or when I saw it of just how rooted everything is in a very detailed game world. Like everyone you meet is very rooted in that world, which is very impressive. So I really like it. Hope you guys do too. Okay, so since you said, since you, uh, something that really struck with me is the fact that they're rooted, deep rooted into the world. Yeah. I mean, when you saw the script and when you saw the storyboarding for this game, I mean, what was the one biggest thing that really, like, struck out at you when you saw it and was like, Wadget Eye has just got to publish this game? Well, um, it had a lot of, like, dark, dark noirish urban scenes, which is my personal favorite thing, and that tends to resonate very well with the audience that we've kind of generated. Um, but when I played it, I was, when I say everything is really deeply rooted in the world, what I mean is that in a lot of adventure games, there's always like a receptionist or, you know, just some random character that obstructs you. And they're just there, they don't have much personality. But what I found very interesting, in Techno Babylon, you talk to all these people, they feel like a part of this world. Like, it's this future, there's all sorts of future things going on. They're, they feel like part of that society. They're not just there to be a receptionist and be like, no, you can't go in there. They actually give a valid story reason why you can't do something. And you've got to, when you try to figure out your way past them, it's all very 
I hate, I've used this word a dozen times, it's very rooted and feels very grounded in, in that world, which uh, is something I was very impressed by. Uh, it's very hard to pull off well. That's true. I mean, so you said you like you like the, no, the noir type, so yeah. I can assume that one of your favorite movies was probably Sin City, in, um, a, in a way. In a way. I mean, like, I think what people think of as noir is not, it's, it's not all like black and white and like dark rain and city streets and fedoras and trench coats and things like that. That's just sort of like the trappings and the dressings of like oh, yeah. those old movies, but to get noir done right, it's like, it's that dichotomy and and that fight between like dark and light, good and evil, you know, the, the real like conflicted character. Um, and that is what noir is, really. Okay. Good noir. It's not just, oh, there's a guy in a trench coat walking down a smoky alley. That's not noir. That's just for a 40s movie. So it's the mental game. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. So it's basically like he's trapped within the mind of others and the mind of himself and trying to like struggle to get out of that. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. All right. Not this game specifically. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. So. So for Wadget Eye Games, is there anything else in the works, as in as in your own self-published work, as in yes. created by you, your wife, and the rest of the team? Well, yeah, uh, we sort of try to have the best of both worlds, because whenever I'm creating something, you know, it takes me a long time. I'm not the fastest creative person. And by the end of it, I'm just like tearing my hair out. It's, you know, I spend a week trying to figure out one puzzle or something, and I get nowhere. It's very frustrating. Uh, but it's the creative process. In the end, I look at it and I love it. But the process of it kind of burns me out. So it's nice to kind of focus on someone else's project for a while. Right. Um, but then after I do that enough, I am itching to be creative again. So I'm kind of in the itching to be creative again mode. And I haven't, I'm, I'm working on a few things. I haven't kind of nailed anything specific yet. Okay. But I'm, I'm working on it. I kind of have a few ideas. I got like three documents on my computer. I've got like an urban fantasy idea, a sci-fi idea, and just a straight up mystery idea. And I will choose one of them. All right. <laughs> I keep like plinking at each one of them and all right, which one should I choose? Because I know that whichever one I choose, I'm going to be stuck with for the next year or so. Right. So I have to make sure that it's what I want to do. And in the meantime, I'm focused on Techno Babylon, so I'm pretty distracted and focused on that. So, um, but I'm looking forward to working on my own thing again. Yeah. All right. So platforms for release for Techno Babylon, what are they looking like? Is it just Steam or is it just Steam? Well, and then even if it is just Steam, is it Steam for Windows 8 and Windows 10 or will it be for Mac, Linux, Mac and Linux as well as PC? Or are you looking at a con are you looking at a potential console release such as ID at Xbox, PlayStation Network, independent, Nintendo, Wii U, 3DS? Well, we don't do consoles. Oh, okay. Um, it's just the certification process and everything involved is just too much for us to want to do. But um, we're going to do PC first. We've been trying to do simultaneous launches with Mac and Linux. Right. It Sometimes we can just spin it right over, and it's great. Sometimes there's a bit more work, so we can't guarantee that'll happen. Um, but we're shooting for PC first, Mac and Windows to follow, Mac and Windows, Mac and Linux to follow, and then sometime in the future, iOS and Android. All right. Yeah, I wish you said Windows Phone, though, because I have a Windows Phone myself. Yeah, we, we haven't done... Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of demand for the Windows Phone, sadly. I know people ask for it, but um, there isn't a big demand for it, unfortunately. But yeah, it only has 5% of the market share, you're right. Less than that, sadly. But, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm being generous with the 5%. <laughs> I mean, I have a Windows Phone myself, mm. but, you know, like, I would like to see more on the Windows Phone, but I can understand why. You can play them, but they're not native, so we can't really support them. Okay. Technically, if there's a technical issue, we can't really... Sorry, we you. didn't code for that, right? Yeah, we didn't do it. So I mean, there's emulators and things, you know, but we can't we can't support them really. Indeed. So any last words before we go? Uh, not really. I guess if you're at Indiecade, you know, stay warm. It's cold out there today. Uh, other than that, thank you, everyone, you know, for playing and supporting us. All right. That was Dave Gilbert of Wadget Eye Games, and I'm Clinton Navigator Bowman of The Outer Haven Productions, www. .net, and we'll catch you next time.